I guess I'll just start off start us off with you've been coaching the league for so long. How how has can you speak to just how odd this offseason has been? You get to a new team, want to get to know players, people better. You haven't been able to be in the building a lot, and players are not around. Just what what challenges have you faced just right out of the gate here with the Titans? Well, it, it is it has been difficult because I haven't met the players in person yet. I've been on Zoom with them every day, which is um, it was much better, you know, um, than I thought it would be. It's been uh, I think it's been really good the way the players have been receptive and um, and the coaches and you know I think they're most enthusiastic about it, you know, just to get the football. So it's a it's a strange year, you know, but I think over the years you kind of see it all, you know. You, You've been around long enough. You've seen nine one one. You know you kind of seen everything. Uh, Katrina. You know it's kind of endless. But this is uh, this is one of the weirder ones, that's for sure. And, and, and why was it a good fit for you in Tennessee? And I guess you're already feeling like it's a good good place for you, even though you haven't met the players. Yeah, it'd be more because of the coaching staff. You know, I um, I was involved in drafting Mike when we coached him coached in Pittsburgh. And I had the um, I coached him for a few years, and then I worked with Todd Dining on the staff. So there's a you know there's some you know you get to know the the, the head coach, uh, and, and you kind of know what he stands for, and you watch tape, and you you watch how the players play, and um, that kind of that kind of won me over. It's uh, they do a great job. The players play hard. They love football. They like being around one another. I think it's more the atmosphere than it is anything. Uh, John Glennon. Hey, Jim. Appreciate your time. Uh, um, wondering, uh, I guess, yeah, if you could talk a little bit about the process of, of how you wound up uh, here. You know, was it a case of, of you uh, uh, coming to uh, Mike or vice versa? And, and also, I guess, uh, you know, what did you do last year? And, and uh, you know, did you think maybe you were – you were done with coaching? I, I didn't know. Yeah, I had some opportunities last year. I decided I'd had a couple injuries when I was playing and I had to get my ankle fixed. So I thought it was good timing. So I had an ankle fusion. And, um, you know, when you once you get out of a free year, you know, you just don't know if you're going to get back in. I had a couple opportunities. And uh, I thought this was uh, the best opportunity for myself and my uh, All right, and maybe uh, to to follow on on Mike, um, uh, what uh, what exactly was uh, Mike Vrabel like as a player, and and uh, uh, unusual at all to uh, uh, be under a head coach who you once coached yourself? Yeah, I, th I mean, I don't know how many times that comes up, but um, as a player, it's kind of how he is now. He was uh, really smart, played a lot of different positions, uh, tough as nails. Um, you know, played, love the game. You could tell his love for the game and still is today. And uh, that's that's the kind of guys you want to work with and work for. Teresa Walker. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, there's been no discussion on exactly, or public discussion, on who's going to be the, the play caller on defense. With your experience, your familiarity with Mike, Mike's experience himself as a coordinator, how much does that matter to have that uh, – you know, settled, and when does it do need to be decided? You know, I, I I don't make those decisions when things need to be decided. Uh, I think more than anything, as a group, this is a close-knit coaching staff, and it doesn't really make a difference who calls it. It's, uh, it's because everybody's here trying to win. We're trying to be on the same page. Uh, in, my, in my time, you know, the, the three months here, I thought it's been awesome. And uh, they, they do a lot, and, and they have fun doing it. And um, so it really doesn't make a difference, you know, who's going to call it, but uh, because everybody's uh, on the same page just trying to win. Paul Kaharski. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you. Um, just wonder if you could go a little more in detail about maybe – in what ways you feel you've you've really been able to get to know guys uh, limited to this this Zoom world, and in what ways you feel you'll you'll have catching up to do once you're uh, 
liberated uh, uh, back at, at the facility to, to engage with them personally? Well, I think it's hard on everybody in, in the whole league. You know, you know, you don't really get a chance to be around your players. I have a son that's coaching at Dallas now, and, um, you know, he's been he's in Frisco and, and there's nobody else there. And, you know, it's hard on everybody. But uh, I think we've done a good job on the Zoom. Uh, I, I, I got a group chat with the players and they get one of those for me for about every other day, giving them schedules and make sure we're all on the same page. And so uh, it's been good. It's been nice to see him in, in person. And, you know, you can you can talk better. You have better conversations and you get a little walkthrough in. That obviously helps. But uh, I thought we've made the most of it. It's been awesome. I've been enjoying it. Uh, I don't really like staring at a computer from seven in the morning till four in the afternoon, but under the circumstances, I think it's been awesome. I don't think Shane was intending to call you older than you are. Uh, yeah. but, but he said that, uh, that to him, you've kind of taken on the D, Dean P's mantle in terms of being the guy who's been there, seen that in, in terms of, uh, the defensive coaching role, how much do you embrace that as, as being a resource for everybody? Well, you know, I kind of give them different. I mean, I, I, I've seen probably everything. So I kind of give them like different perspective on how things are played and why they're played and uh, whether I'm right or wrong. And then and, and, um, I, I, I mean, I'll do anything I can to help win. So it's uh, it's it's good that they'll listen to me. I'm glad that some guys listen and uh, hopefully I can I can interact enough that I can give them something that can help us win games. And that's the number one thing that's that's really all i care about thanks uh luke hey coach good to talk to you for the first time i want to piggyback a little bit off of what Therese was asking about defensive play calling in your career when you have been the one to do that how much of it is a you know okay on game day we're just i'll just you know, follow my instincts and do this and how much of it is maybe a collaborative process leading up to the game well, I always think it's a collaborative process because everybody's involved in some phase of defense, whether it's red zone, short yardage, goal line, third down, and you got to trust the coaches that you're with because as a coordinator, you don't have time to sit there and study every everything during the week, especially a short week. So you have to have good coaches around. You got to trust them, and um, when things don't work, you got to you got to make some adjustments and and uh, and then move on. But uh, so far. And from the short time that I've been here, I, it's been awesome that all the coaches, the DB coaches to the D-line coach and Mike, you know, it's it's been awesome. Uh, Teron? Coach, appreciate you taking this time. Uh, as far as having been a guy who's been around it all, seen it all, obviously there's going to be a natural level of respect from your players. But for you, being as though the demographic is different, What's the key to connecting to your players in this, this short amount of time, uh, how you have to do that? Well, I've been, I've been doing it, you know, like I said, I've been doing it through group chats and telephone and, you know, obviously Zoom and Teams work. And so uh, I just haven't physically sat in a room and had a chance to talk with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, we've had group chats. Uh, we, we've had – we've been together for – you know, it seems like a long time, but physically, you know, we, it's not a hand, we haven't had hands on t connection yet. And uh, there's a lot of people in the league doing the same thing right now. But within those group chats, is it kind of, uh, is, is there kind of like an effort to make those emotional deposits, if you know what I mean, just to, to really connect to your players? Well, I think that's what they're for, to be honest with you. And uh, we've had talks about football, we had talks about life. You know, talks about um, what the best thing is for them in the, in the future. So that's uh, and, and and a lot of football in there too. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Right. But there's uh, there's other things involved too that that you really when you're one on one with them, you can talk to them about. So it's a little more difficult, but it's been good. It's been, it really has. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, Corey Curtis. Uh, hey, Coach. Welcome to Nashville. Thanks for your time today. Uh, kind of along those lines, uh, before you came on today, Coach Rabel came out and made some statements about uh, what's going on in the world and, and having spent the last two days talking to players. Um, you were a head coach for five years. You've been around the game a long time. 
you implement game plans and draw up strategies. How, how important is connecting with those players on those levels, listening to them, understanding their lives? How important is that towards the success of an organization as compared to everything else? Well, I do think it's important. And I thought Mike did a nice job uh, this week, uh, let the players know that he cares about them and he, he wants to know if they're safe, you know, be smart. Uh, he backs them in what they believe in. And, I, you know, I've gone through a few things. I went through Katrina, uh, probably cost me my job in New Orleans. Uh, it, it was an awful experience. I went through 911, like the rest of the country, uh, probably made the worst mistake as a head coach, um, kind of lost my way a little bit in, in that situation. So it, it's not just football is, is, it is much life too. These, I mean, these guys are going to play football for the next 10 years, hopefully, and be successful and win a couple Super Bowls, but they're going to be involved in life for the next 50 years. So, you know, you, you try to direct them and do the right things, uh, what you believe in. Uh, Terry McCormick. Jim, I, I know that you haven't physically met the players yet. You've been talking about having meetings. How have you handled the evaluation process in terms of getting to know each guy's skill set, what they can bring to the table, and what you expect out of them for 2020? Well, I've done a couple of things. Obviously, watching tape gives me a, a good indication. Of I've watched every game. And I got write-ups on all those guys, all the players here. Um, things I think they need to improve on, things they do well, um, you know, all, all that. And then, um, I like right now, I get tapes from them every week, workout tapes. They they do drills. I give them a list of drills to do each week, and they'll send me a, a by phone. So it keeps me keeps me occupied on Saturday and Sunday because I look at the drill tapes that they send. And then I'll critique them. I'll tell them I want them to do this. I want them to do that. And, and uh, it's been pretty good. And then uh, as a follow-up to that, a guy like David Long, who kind of carved out a role on special teams, but maybe the top backup this year, that sort of thing. Uh, what do you see in him potentially? And uh, what, what what impressed you about him late in the year last year when he made some, some plays for this team? Yeah, and no, I thought I think David's a good football player. Did a good job when he played. He's uh, very instinctive. He's got short uh, area quickness. Um, there's some things that, that he'll get better at. I think we can improve everybody in, in certain areas. So, uh, you know, I knew these guys, don't forget now, when these guys came out of college, David's at Cincinnati, um, you know, Jay on, you know, UCLA, I went down and worked with Sean. Ott. So it's, it's not like, you know, I haven't seen him before because I, I, I experienced, I worked him out when they were in college and, and come out. There's only a couple guys that I didn't. So it's been pretty good. Even even the two young rookies uh, that we signed, the free agent guys, that, uh, you know, the coaches spoke highly of them. They did a great job on tape and really smart. And, uh, you know, they kind of fit the mode here. Uh, time for a couple more. Uh, Buck? Coach, nice to digitally meet you. Welcome to Nashville. Uh, with Jayon and Rashawn, I guess, how much versatility do the skill sets of those two guys uh, allow for within a defense, given that they're not that they're not very similar in their skill set, but they both allow you to do so much? Yeah, well, Rashawn was an outside linebacker at Alabama who's moved inside, so obviously he's got pass rush ability. Um, he can cover a lot of ground. He's, he's strong. He's got power in his play, uh, and he plays hard. I mean, he plays like his hair is on fire. Jayon has got really good cover skills. Uh, he's tough. He's really smart. He plays a number of different positions. He does a lot for the team. Uh, I think there's some areas that he can improve in, like the other guys. But uh, I, I see nothing but upside on both of them. And last one, uh, Jim, if you want to finish it up for us. And coach, just want to get back to you just on getting yourself familiar with a new team. I, I think this is the seventh NFL team for you. What, what is the process like as you get players to understand your expectations, to get find familiarity and a comfort level with them? I, what is that process like? Well, don't know the, the expectations because I kind of, I, I don't beat around the bush. I kind of come out and tell them what I think and, uh, what I think they need to improve on and, and what they're really good at. 
and where we can get better as a team. So that, that there's no hidden agenda there. Um, the thing that they just gonna, you know, we got to get together at some point, obviously. And when we do, um, all, all the other stuff, you know, how you handle the players and what do you expect from them and all that, that that'll come when we get together.